Welcome everyone to this week's Founder Chat. I'm here today with Amara Bukajil, who is the founder of Shop Studio Live. I've actually talked to Amara before and I'm excited to get a bit of an update as to what you've been up to and what Shop Studio Live is. I know that it is, I, love, I loved how this was worded. It allows customer obsessed brands to create live shopping experiences, including live chat, as well as video, and they're able to feature products in different ways directly on their online store. So I know this is a really interesting area um, and you, I'm sure, will have lots to educate us on in this space. And I'm sure it's gotten even bigger in the last year and a half. Um, so I feel like I'm, I'm interested to see kind of um, a bit more about where this all started and how you got from where we last were, were in conversation to where you are today. So uh, before we before I jump in. Yes, welcome. So everyone can hear your voice. Say hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> nice to hello, be here. Hello, hello. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So before I um, hand over the mic to learn more about the origin story about Shop Studio Live, I should probably introduce myself. Um, I'm Melanie Ewan. For anyone who doesn't know me here today, whether you're joining us live here on Instagram or you're on IGTV or YouTube later, welcome, welcome. We really appreciate you being here. So essentially, if you haven't been to one of these before, we're going to have about 30 minutes of a kind of casual interview style conversation. You're very welcome to ask questions, to engage, um, and we're just going to get to know a little bit more about Emmer and about Shop Studio Live, about the origin story um, and, and kind of lessons learned along the way and what the, the future outlook looks like and such. I realize my lighting is very bright behind me, so apologies for that. Just adjust slightly. Um, and uh, Volition, at Volition, we build connectivity and um, knowledge in global startup ecosystems. So a lot of our team is based out of Vancouver. Uh, I myself am in Montreal, and I'm very excited to be here getting to know, um, I, get, I get to know about more of the founders in our ecosystem each week, which is fantastic. So with no further ado then, I am going to um, hand over the reins to you, Amr, to tell us a little bit more about Shop Studio Live and um, more about what this kind of last year and a half, or where, let's start with the, where this started. Let's start with who, who you are today, because um, not everyone maybe has watched the other Instagram Live and gotten to know you, which you should if you haven't. <laughs> um, but let's, let's hear a little bit more about you and where, um, and then where uh, Shop Studio Live came from. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Melody. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Always nice to, to chat. Um, yeah, I think from, from the best way I think I could describe uh, who I am and I guess what I've been doing for the last, uh, you know, almost two and a half years in the Vancouver ecosystem is uh, kind of creating startups within a startup studio. Um, yeah. or within a startup studio model. So slightly different than maybe uh, some of our more to, like typical founders that maybe are doing it uh, on their own. Uh, I had the, the kind of the pleasure and, and the privilege of, of uh, joining a software development company here in Vancouver called TDT Studios. Uh, and really my only mandate was to help um, and be supported by them uh, in creating new product ideas. And so as you mentioned, uh, the last startup that I was kind of leading uh, was called Amanda AI and it was a facial recognition company uh, for mm -hmm. the events industry. Uh, unfortunately, we kind of, we still exist, but we, we definitely did obviously had to had to slow down um, yeah. because of uh, COVID. Uh, so really, a, a year and a half ago, we wound down a lot of our operations uh, and are kind of waiting for maybe the right time uh, to come back or figure out how to restart it. Yeah. Um, but after that, so so I had kind of some time to to sit back and think about well, you know, what other product ideas uh, am I excited about, and 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 can we kind of uh, bring to life? Um, and instead of just kind of jumping right in, I, I created a, a, a new product development process. Uh, the, the goal there was to try to say that, you know, if, if I'm going to spend my time doing something and I'm going to, you know, try to bring in team members to do that as well, uh, it should be something that, um, you know, something, first of all, I'm, and I'm excited about is as a market industry, but also something that, you know, we can see that has kind of potential and a potential big market impact. Um, yeah. and, you know, I, I had kind of created a process, I like created a scorecard around the process to make sure that I'm not being, uh, you know, leaning one way or another because of my preferences as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I engaged people at the company. So at TTT Studios, I, I brought it to some of our staff members and uh, we came up with a number of ideas as a, as, a, as a company and actually we came up with a number of problems is the best way I like to describe it. 
Yeah. Um, and then we distilled those problems that the different people were having across everything from, you know, taking care of their plants to obviously shopping to, uh, to like how to prepare a will uh, online in an easy mm -hmm. way. Um, mm -hmm. so we had a huge, and it's sponsorships. I think you and I even had a conversation actually. We did it. have a conversation. Yeah. yeah so that, that <laughs> We're about, still yeah. a pain point today, but. <laughs> yeah. we it, but maybe, maybe it'll, it'll come soon. But, but that, was, that was kind of what I went through for, I think about three to four months. That was purely what I was doing. It was just um, like problem hunting. Uh, yeah. like problems, talking to stakeholders in different industries and markets. And, and really, you know, at the end of the day, what happened was, you know, shopping uh, or e-commerce was one that we kept, you know, we're, we were kept hearing from merchants about some of the problems that they were facing. Um, you know, those problems were that, you know, obviously with, with the transition to online shopping, a lot of merchants were missing that personal touch. They were doing things like this on Instagram Live, uh, trying to sell products, but we're, they weren't really getting the impact from an Instagram Live. It was more for awareness and for product awareness, yeah. uh, but they didn't really yeah. feel the direct impact of the live streams. Yeah. Um, and then we just heard, you know, people saying that they have concerns about their conversion rates uh, as, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, iOS uh, privacy and tracking regulations were coming in. Uh, yeah. You know, merchants expected their ad spend to increase, so they weren't really sure, you know, if my ads are going to cost a lot more money. Uh, how's that going to affect my bottom line uh, yeah. in my online store? Uh, and, you know, the word we kept hearing over and over again was kind of starting to, merchants saying, I'm starting to feel a little bit helpless. Um, right. And so we looked at kind of potential solutions. We looked at a couple of different, you know, alternatives uh, for how we can help them. And we weren't really stuck to to live shopping. We looked at things like even social shopping. So how can we get maybe people, customers to buy things together? We looked at a few alternatives. Mm. Uh, Interesting. For live shopping, we essentially went out and built out wireframes and, and went back to merchants and, and talked to them about the wireframes and what their thoughts were. Uh, and we got a lot of interesting feedback. And so the product, <laughs> now getting to the product that we went to do <laughs> live, uh, essentially what it does is it provides, you know, live video, live chat, and highlights certain products. It does that live video stream directly in an e-commerce website. So... Okay. Uh, the best kind of comparison I can give you is when you go to a website and you see kind of the little live chat button where you can talk to a support agent. Yeah. We provide that, but it's actually a live stream video of the merchant kind of sitting in their online store. And so, yeah, we, we launched just about two months ago. It took us a while to kind of get things uh, built out and developed. Uh, we integrated with Shopify because we wanted to have, a, you know, access to a, a nice, a large customer base at the start point, so people mm -hmm. can install our app through the Shopify app store. Uh, and yeah, as I mentioned, we launched about two months ago, and, and we've just been kind of, uh, you know, moving along ever since. Yeah, cool. Yeah. What have been some initial, if you can share them, initial lessons learned or insights in these, these first couple of months of launch? Yeah, I think, um, like, one of the big ones for us was, like, managing third-party uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. um, so in our case, our application obviously we're integrating with Shopify. We, we integrate with certain services for chat and video and so on. And it's been interesting to, uh, so now we're at our app kind of is the aggregator in the middle. Um, yeah. So it's kind of been interesting because, um, you know, again, when you're not the person developing each aspect of your app, you, you kind of let a little bit of control uh, go to other companies, let's say. Yeah. And some yeah. companies are fantastic and, and they have, uh, you know, uh, really great customer service and really great support documentation and others not so much. So, so I think that's something we struggled with is, you know, um, in a way measuring the third party risk uh, a bit more carefully before the start of a project, I think has been a nice lesson learned for us. Uh, and it was interesting reflecting back to our, our previous startup where, again, we had a facial recognition algorithm and that was actually our own. We weren't, for example, relying on a third party right. service. Uh, yeah. And that made, you know, a lot of things easier for us. And I think yeah. it, it, we kind of went the other way this time where we said, let's rely on third party services. And, and that's been a challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, it, it, the, the, the benefit, and I'm sure a lot of startups um, nowadays, like we build our apps and our solutions, um, you know, because we have an idea and it, it's sometimes very difficult to develop an idea from you know, zero. You actually rely on so many services uh, to promote your app or to build your app and to host your app. 
Uh, and so I think just being smart about that, talking to your developers, making sure there's a lot of communication between, you know, you, your team, and then also the team from this third party, the third party company. Right. With. Yeah. Amazing. I love, I, I, Barsh is saying in the chat here, I love how passionate you are about the products you're offering. I think what I love about talking to you is the way your brain thinks and the process that you come at, the way you come at things. Like even like, I know you said, and now we're getting to actually what the product is that we're doing. It took a long time to get there, but I mean, that's how your brain thinks I feel like. And you just like, you're, I love, like, obviously, as you said, you had that advantage and that privilege of being able to take that time to search for a problem that made sense and was an actual problem people were experiencing. And a lot of, a lot of, um, of entrepreneurs go at it from a different direction because they're not within kind of that that kind of space you can do that but i think it's so interesting how you really came out of amanda ai also saying like hey let's let's build out this process and let's like mm -hmm. i want to find something i'm excited about but also there's the market for so mm -hmm. that we'll continue to to work on this and it's something that's mm -hmm. gonna have legs and longevity and, and all those pieces that's what i always mm -hmm. hear from you you always seem passionate about what you're working <laughs> on but i think it's <laughs> which i think is great and just kind of the person that you are but also clearly you did come at this project very intentionally and build a whole system around deciding um what you were going to work on which i think is amazing um and then i threw that two month question at you because i also know that you probably are already assessing all of these things because it seems mm -hmm. to be also that's how your brain works is like let's learn let's continue to learn from 100%. every piece of data right yeah yeah i think that's fantastic i love that so much um yeah so when you were you were explaining how this works i'm still trying to visualize i feel mm -hmm. like live shopping to me I don't know. I don't feel old, but I feel like I'm too old to understand it. So I want you, can you um, talk me through a little bit more? Like what is live shopping and why is this a trend that is kind of an up and coming area? Who is using this? Am I using it? I'm 35. Am I using this? Is my grandma using this? Like who, who is my one day potential child? <laughs> using this? Like yeah, 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 what is this? Yeah. What does this kind of, what does this space look like? True. I mean, it's been super interesting because we're learning about it as we go, as yeah. we talk to merchants. Um, yeah. That's actually been kind of the most fascinating thing is I started off thinking that, you know, we'll create this application, we'll find a, you know, a niche of users. And I still hope that we will kind of find a really passionate niche. Uh, but yeah. so far it's been interesting because we've, we've landed a, a really wide variety of, of merchants and, uh, I'll maybe dig into some later, but like people just went, went on Shopify. People sell all kinds of things. We have merchants that are selling grills, clothing, uh, like uh, services. So not even just products, but they go on and they talk right. about their services as well. Uh, and so again, still very unexpected. And we're still kind of learning a little bit more about who we yeah. can really hyper target. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the best, again, another maybe parallel to explain what it is is uh, the live uh, the home shopping network so i was just thinking that yeah. yes yeah back, yeah back in the day you would go on your tv uh there was yes. a channel where people <laughs> uh were selling things and you would call in and you would order that thing and you would get delivered this was it still exists to this day but uh you know it, it was a thing that happened before online shopping yeah uh, and essentially live shopping is bringing that back but bringing it to e-commerce right and, um, really, in, in a live shopping event, what's happening is, is often it's the merchant. Sometimes they hire someone else to, to do this for them. But, you know, they're in a video just like we are right now. Uh, but instead of, you know, having an interview, they're talking about, uh, you know, mm -hmm. products, products that they want to market, you know, they want to push, right? Because again, yeah. they can have feature products. Those are maybe products that are either on sale or their uh, recent launch, for example. Uh, and uh, the merchants there... Uh, promoting that product, talking about it, uh, you know, answering questions. And that's really why the live chat exists is to get people's kind of questions answered. Uh, okay. And again, the goal being getting people more excited to purchase. Uh, yeah. you know, our, our app still doesn't support checkout natively in it. But keep in mind, our app is overlaid on top of the Shopify store. And yeah. so when people interact with the app, click on the products, they go to the uh, product page and then they're still able to like add to cart and check out through Shopify natively. Yeah. But our video actually goes with you wherever you are on the website while the merchant is live streaming. So again, if mm. a merchant is live streaming for an hour, they're hosting a live streaming event, they're talking about, you know, their new arrivals 
anyone who lands on the website gets to see a live stream video just like this pop up in the, at the bottom right. You know, for people who want to engage with it some more, they can expand it or they can kind of do the chat and look at the products. If people mm. get the video on their data plan and they don't want to waste their data, they can click on you know, X and they can close that video. Uh, yeah. But really, it's the idea of, um, again, I, I describe it as like having the merchant sit in their online store. So the same yeah. way a merchant would be or a seller would be sitting in their, you know, brick and mortar store answering questions. This is the same concept, but you're talking to people that are visiting your online store. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Okay, I get it now. It's like it's like shopping channel. It's like going to a trade show or like an exhibition into one of those big rooms where they're standing at their booth and talking through all their latest products and you can yep. ask the questions, see them show it and such and such. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. I'm super curious where this is this can go. Um it makes sense. It makes sense in my mind, though, uh, and I appreciate that. So, okay, so you've been building this for a year and a half. You launched two months ago. You're already you already have some learnings in the bag. What does the future of Shop Live look like? Mm. Shop, yeah, so Shop Studio, Studio Live. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think for us, the future is really based on where our customers want us to go. It's it's it's. I have a ton of ideas about what we can do. There's um, yeah. I think a lot more features we can build. There's a lot more, uh, you know, there's interesting directions where the industry is going. You know, right now, mm -hmm. again, we're live streaming to a website. Can we do this, you know, on a mobile app? Can we do this, uh, you know, across not just e-commerce websites, but can we just do a plugin that maybe does live streaming on any website? There's a lot of, like, different mm -hmm. ideas that we have. But the reality is right now we're going through, or we will be going through kind of our first big, uh, retrospects uh, of, of what's been happening. So uh, right. as of yesterday, I started reaching out to some of our customers. Uh, so our current users, if you're on the live stream, you check your emails, you've received a personalized email from me uh, because I want to interview <laughs> you. So really the goal here is to interview some of our current users, uh, to even talk to some of our current users. So some of our users who are no longer users, reaching out and saying, hey, really appreciate the doubt that you downloaded the app. You know, I saw that you used it. Um, I noticed you have uninstalled it. Would you be willing to either complete a survey or chat? I really want to understand how we can make these initial, uh, you know, quality of life improvements in our application. Yeah. I think yeah. that's kind of step number one. Um, and so I'd say, like, again, I, I can't remember which founder uh, mentioned this, but there's, you know, often what happens is startups optimize for like a local maximum. So you're thinking about the next three to six months, and that's all you're optimizing for. And yeah, it's easy to get stuck in that mindset. That's where I am today. Yeah. But I also yeah. realize, you know, to your question is that there's kind of this long-term maximum potential. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. You know, this next iteration of the app, what is it going to look like? And I'm still really not sure. We're tracking the market. We're tracking with some of our, like, more, uh, there's a couple of competitors in the U.S. that are doing really interesting twists on, on live mm -hmm. shopping okay. options even. Um, yeah. And so we're trying to think about how can we create even more special or unique uh, aspects to our application that, that are maybe even more difficult for someone to reproduce. How do we build some how right. do we build a remote around our technology implementation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we can optimize for that like long-term uh, potential, long-term growth uh, as well. So still not sure right. what the future holds in the long term. <laughs> yes, but you're asking the right questions, it sounds like. Like I love that I, I've been reviewing many, many um, pitch decks recently <laughs> uh, and seeing a lot of that like three to six months this is our timeline <laughs> I'm like okay so what does back. it look beyond three to six months like yeah. can you can you show me you know what what your plan is and that, that I don't know what your I mean yes what your plan is be great but that you're asking these questions and that you're thinking mm -hmm. about this and thinking about how you're going to fit in the in the competitive landscape long term mm -hmm. um and how you might adapt and grow and you know, have your pulse on trends. So again, yeah. I, your brain just seems to work like that. I think it's really interesting. Obviously it's learned though. And I know in our last conversation, we, I asked you the same question. I'll ask you it again today, which is, do you have any particular tips that you would have for um, your peer entrepreneurs? I know again, that you're in a, like, you know, you went within a, a different kind of space in the entrepreneur world right now, but mm -hmm. do you have anything maybe that you've learned since we last talked? Um, I guess it was a year ago, fish, mm -hmm. a year and a little bit ago. Um, any tips or tool, tips or, or insights that you would have for those those entrepreneurs who are who are just starting out? Yeah, I honestly think 
I mean, and I give, I'm giving this advice to myself as well, is, is just keep talking to your customers whenever you can. Yeah. Um, so I, like I said, I think I did a really good job at that early on when we were kind of still looking for the problem. I think since yeah. we launched, I've had the opportunity to talk to some people through like, you know, responding to emails. I, I'm the person on our live chat on our website. So I get questions there sometimes, you know, right now, like I said, now I realize that I want to have these interviews and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'll be honest, like, I think, you know, in the middle of, of this all, when we were kind of in the eight, six to eight months where we were developing the app, um, there was like a little bit of where like I was super focused on just getting, you know, things built. So I kind of was more of a project manager instead of a product manager, like not really thinking right. about, uh, as much about the customers. Like I had these conversations, let's build based on that. And that was yeah. it. And I think even in those six to eight months, so much change in the industry and mm. maybe what our customers would have wanted. And I think I, I kind of had a little bit of a gap there. And I think, you know, my biggest tip to me and, and fellow entrepreneurs is, um, you know, engage with your customers, engage with people who download your app. Uh, beyond just a welcome email, I'm trying to get away from that as well. You know, welcome emails or sequences are great. How do you try to say like, let's schedule a consultation, let's schedule a chat, uh, especially in the early days where you can still do that one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, yeah. It's easy again to just create email sequences and assume everyone's the same. Where right. early on, when you still just have you know less than a hundred users, let's say, you're able to reach out and talk to people and, and have those, those one-on-ones. Uh, and then eventually later on, yeah, like be more efficient, create templates and so on. But, but really customer conversations uh, mm -hmm. are critical. And, and I, 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 I'm working on that right now, but it's the best I think advice I can give to you uh, yeah. out there. Don't wait to, and I don't want to say sell. I think again, don't wait to talk to your customers. It's easy to say, I'll wait, I'll wait till I have an MVP. I'll wait till we launch. Right. I'll wait. But, yes. but really just, yeah, let's look, keep, keep, make it ongoing. Yeah. And people, I found people are, are willing to talk to you. I'm always willing to talk to people um, that mm -hmm. were, I'm just starting using out there, using, starting to use their product. Cause I appreciate that they're asking. Mm -hmm. Have you found that people have been willing to talk? Is there like a particular way that you've, you've um, engaged these kind of early, mm -hmm. early adopters? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Uh, so uh, yeah, willingness to talk. Like, I, uh, so I've had, and maybe it's just the market or the industry because it's something for me. I do get a lot of like live chat messages or, or like, contact or emails. So without me doing the outreach, I have been kind of still in tune with what some of our customers yeah. want. So again, I'm lucky because of that for sure. Uh, and maybe again, a tip is just to make sure you have clear uh, indication of how customers can reach out to you on your website right. or, uh, you know if you're able to support some live chat functionality i uh, do that some customers like that uh you can schedule you know times you're available and so on so i, I, mm -hmm. I was actually surprised at how well it's been working uh, for this app compared to even amanda ai like i had i think a live chat on that website but maybe because it was more like high touch and enterprise mm. No one really used it, but with this, it's like, right. so we, we hear right. a lot of these businesses. But yeah, so I, I did do some outreach yesterday, heard back already from, I think, one or two users about this. Uh, but my approach, and, and again, people can feel free to use this even for interviews. It's more of like people use this for sales. It's Vidyard. So Vidyard or Loom. So that's a screen recording mm -hmm. uh, software mm -hmm. where you can record a screen on your computer, but also have a little bubble with your face where you're talking to your customer. Uh, and so actually what I did for this sequence of outreach, because we kind of had a finite number of people that I wanted to reach out to that were more of our active users, I opened up their online store uh, and I started a video art video. Mm. And, you know, pretty much just said, you know, hi, I'm Hammer. I'm the founder of Shop Studio Live. Uh, you know, we want to make our app, like, app better. I can see you know, the kinds of products that you sell. I think that they're very, you know, relevant to live shopping. I think your customers would love to hear more from you. Um, yeah. And I, you know, at the same time, I want to make sure we give you guys the, or you, we give you the best experience possible using our app. Uh, and so, you know, you, there's a link in the email that I'm sending this where you can schedule an interview. So it's kind of, so that video I'm recording, it was about one minute for, for, you know, yeah. I, don't know I think I did 10 or something or merchants that were like our most active merchants. Yeah. Um, and the idea there was to just kind of break the ice, uh, get them yeah. to feel like they kind of know me already. So if they're scheduled. Talking to a human. Chat, yeah. yeah, if you're scheduling mm -hmm. a chat with me, like it's it's obviously more of a high touch thing instead of just completing yeah. a survey. And yeah, yeah. those moments I want to sit down and, and talk to and, and you know learn more about their experience so far and how we can make it better. So 
Yeah. The more you can personalize your outreach, the better. Um, you know, yeah. I can, and, and yeah, like mm -hmm. whether it's even if it's just email, uh, you know, making sure you have at least a couple of lines there about like truly how, why do you want to talk to that person? Why do you want to talk to that business? Um, as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm also, what I'm hearing is um, like matching the way that you're reaching out, what you're asking of them with like what you provide them and also with the customer itself. Cause you're saying with like Amanda mm -hmm. AI there, it was like a different customer, right? So maybe the mm -hmm. different ways of reaching out are going to work better or not. And if you're asking for an actual conversation and interview, which is more than just a survey, providing a little bit more of the high touch, providing them with a little bit more Mm -hmm. um personalized experience so they're more willing to give their time as well uh, as what i'm hearing which i think is really interesting and yeah, um, i know is key as well yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah i know we're coming to the end of our time i feel like we could learn from you for ages um and you're obviously very good at at sharing your knowledge which i always appreciate um so you've given so much to us and you've shared about what um you're doing with strap studio live and i'm curious to know what can we as your community do to support you so what is your ask here yeah. today yeah my ask uh, i mean check, keep us keep us in mind so feel free to please follow us on facebook instagram linkedin twitter we're shop studio yeah. live on all those platforms uh in addition to that actually i we we just today got listed on beta list uh, so oh, beta congratulations list. yeah it's a, oh, thank you thank you it's a product uh listing platform uh, so if anyone's watching and you have a minute, uh, feel free to go on beta list. You can search for us as well. Right now we're on the front page because we just got listed today. Um, <laughs> but you can leave a comment or you can give us a like uh, and that'll help make sure that we hopefully become one of the trending apps because you know initially they do listings and then the, the apps with a lot of likes uh, go trending. So that okay. happened today. So uh, for, for folks who uh, uh, are, are on or watch us later, please go to beta list. I think it's beta list.com. Uh, and we should be uh, right at the top and search for Shop Studio Live and give us a like. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> That's very exciting. Awesome. awesome. And I know that you also shared some of your other um, exciting news, which was that you, as of August, had over 6,000 minutes, 100 hours of live stream mm -hmm. shopping activity on the platform. Yeah. So, and you just, at that point, you would have just launched within a, like a month, I guess, when yeah. we last talked to you. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, we, we, got, we had a big boost. I think, I, I'm not sure actually what the, the number is exactly right now. But yeah, I mean, early on, we had uh, a ton of people uh, live streaming. Uh, we had a right. certain customer that was uh, doing actually really long shows where they were uh, like doing interviews and, and hosting uh, events like video, like, you know, uh, virtual events on their website yeah. using Shop Studio Live. So uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome to see that kind of use case as well. And I uh, yeah. forward to see yeah, more people use it and, and more shoppers kind of experiencing it as well. Cool. All right. So if people want to connect with you directly, how would they get in touch? Uh, yeah. Uh, same thing. I think uh, my email is on our website. Uh, I I'm the person behind the, you know, all the, all the info. Right. At <laughs> as well, if you want to reach yes, out. Yes. Yes. Or the live chat. I'm always on there. Uh, other than that, you can find me on LinkedIn. So Amr Abu Kajil on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I think the main way people can reach out. Happy to connect with people through LinkedIn and, and uh, go from there. Great. All right. Um, fantastic. Thank you for that so much. And so people can go check out shopstudiolive.live. Is that correct? It's shopstudio.live. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> and then also, as you mentioned, on all, oh yeah, shopstudio.live. Yes, that makes more sense. <laughs> shopstudio.live. Awesome. People can go there. You can also shop studio live on all the socials, as was mentioned. Make sure to go and check them out, provide feedback, help spread the word. Um, all the things so amazing thank you so much is there anything that we didn't get to touch on that you've wanted to mention here today uh not particularly if anyone watches this and they're an e-commerce merchant please feel free to reach out happy to chat and, and learn more about your kind of uh your problems and your needs and if what we offer uh, helps you out uh but always happy to talk to more e-commerce merchants uh, as well so if you're watching this reach out please Fantastic. All righty. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so Thank much you. for being with us here again. Really appreciate it. Um, you. you always provide so much incredible knowledge. So I know it's a different product that you're talking about this time, but everyone, if you go back and check out my previous uh, IG Live with Amr, you'll learn even more. Um, so I do recommend that. It's in our um, IGTV section where all of the, I don't know how many are there, there are now, but it's been over a year and 
like four months since we started doing this. So there's quite a few interviews on there, which is fantastic. Um, and as you may remember, the last thing I always like to ask on these is, what is one thing that brings you joy right now? Yeah. Um, good coffee. I, I don't know if that's, <laughs> yeah, honestly, like that's, it's not that I'm like overworking or anything like that, but uh, I, got, I, recently <laughs> got an, joy. I recently got an espresso machine and it's just been, yeah, it's just been like the one. I, I love coffee. I've had a ton of coffee before, but for some reason, espresso, I mean, this is a plug for them. Uh, just, yeah, it's just next level. So I've been enjoying that a lot. I enjoy it every time I make coffee, so. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll make sure yeah. to take them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We'll these are going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah, I think it's one of my favorite things. I would like to, like, bring together all the answers that I've had to this question because the things that bring people joy over the last year and a half, Mm -hmm. are so small or they see yeah. they're seemingly small right but they're the first thing that comes to people's minds of like yeah. oh here's this daily like this one thing daily yeah. um that does do that for me and i think that it can be so small and i think that's important for us to to be aware of that yeah. you know <laughs> it's it's just these little things that kind of make our day and kind of look forward to right i'll put you on the spot Melanie. what's something you're you know what's something that's bringing you joy today oh no one ever asks me <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what's one thing bringing me joy right now? Um, I, so I'm just looking at it right now. So I'm going to mention this. There's probably lots of things. But now I realize when I put, when I ask people things, why they're like, I don't know. Um, for me, I, so we just moved into this new place a couple of months, two and a half months ago. I'm in Montreal, living in Montreal now. And we just kind of like got everything in the house set up to the point where we could buy a bunch of indoor plants. And I, Never was a plant person before, but in the last kind of year and a half, um, while I was moving around through Ireland and, and different areas of Canada, I really fell in love with um, with gardening and and just trees and birds for some reason. Nice. So I, my next thing is to buy bird feeders. I'll bring lots of joy. But all right now I have two um, indoor plants right next to me. And every time I walk through a room and see our indoor plants, it makes me happy. And um, so that's one little thing that for me, brings me joy. So I made sure to put two where I can see them in my office because awesome. um, it's just like a nice, you know, some little, little something, a uh, little bit of nature. That's inside. awesome. That's, that's one I little am. thing. I'm sure there's lots of others, fun. but that's all. <laughs> that's my thing right now. Thank you for asking me. All right. So, um, yeah, so I'll be back in October. I'm going to be away for a week and then we'll be back in uh, whatever the next whatever the next tuesday is after next week because apparently it's like mid-october and yeah. we post thanksgiving even here in canada so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so i think um be i'll be back in october what's that yeah. i think it'll be october 12th i might be wrong but i think that's yeah it. that sounds <laughs> that sounds right yes yes i'll be back then talking to more founders and some of our partners in the ecosystem which i'm looking forward to um but until then i hope that everyone has a lovely time um and please do um please do provide if you're watching this live or if you're watching it later please do say hello if you have any extra questions for Amber, please make sure to um add those and we'll make sure to get those over to him so thank you again really appreciate it um and i will see you all soon cheers bye melanie take care bye, bye. you too